As a writer, people know me as Asma Nadia, but my real name is Asmarani Rosalba. I'm a writer from Indonesia, publisher and traveler addict, and uh, also a coordinator for 68 libraries for unprivileged children in Indonesia. I have a dream for 1,000, so it's still far to go. <laughs> In Indonesia, people really, uh, intellectual people especially, they respect those who can write. So I met an ambassador who said that he wished that uh, he will have a novel one day. And I met a teacher, a businessman, even a actor and singers, and they really wish they could be a writer. So it's a good thing. And in my country, I promote one motto. It's uh, one book before you die. I mean, uh, all of us will be die anyway, but if we can choose, we have a right to choose, uh, we have opportunity to choose to have just three lines when we die written, like name and then the date when we were born and the date when we were die. Or we can have so many pages written and a long life discussions through our writing. So. That's another thing. I think other than we have a diversity and every provinces are unique and beautiful and I realize it the more I travel around the world. Also, we had the bad crisis in 1998 and it's uh, surprisingly that we can get over it and now the economic situation getting better I think Indonesia is one of the uh, people predict will be have uh, a better future uh, economically in the world and also we have uh, more freedom expression and in the last 10 years we have more uh, a new phenomenon for related to literary like we have children writers for example, my daughter, she has published 10 books when she was in junior high school. And now she has 12 books published. And my son uh, started to write his first anthology uh, published when he was five years old. And at the age of 10, he already had two books. And there are many, like hundreds, probably 400 young writers, children writers, uh, who started having the book published when they were just five years old. And they not just stop in writing one book, but they keep writing and producing more books, and the children love their books. For me, writing is a way to fight, to make sure that things that matters to you most heard and spoken. Um, also, I realized that a life is a very short, limited time and I get panicked many times when I know that there are still many things I want to write. And as a writer, I think it's amazing. I mean, uh, we don't die. Uh, we can keep, I mean, we have a possibility to have our ideas, our spirit, what the things that we fight uh, keep living. So that's one of the reason. And also I'm a mother and I realize, I think every mother wants to be in the children's side as long as they could, but they don't know how much time we have. Uh, so for me, I have to write many, many, many books for them. So when they are grown up and probably my son have problem, other things or my daughter, and I wasn't there anymore, I hope they don't have to say like, what my mom will say if she's here. But they can just look at the books that I write for them. Uh, for There was one nonfiction book that for me it's really moved and uh, it's, it's the title is uh, No Excuse and it's written by Isa Alamsha 
and it was one the most inspirational book in Indonesia. As I realized that excuses are enemies for success, and it's like a hidden disease. People have it. I mean, for example, like I met many person that say, I want to be a writer, but too bad, I don't have time to write. But uh, then later on, I know that, uh, they, I mean, we, we actually have a plenty of time, but we sometimes choose to have a more time to sleep or more time to do other things. So it's just, again, an excuse. Uh, that's one. And for uh, fiction, I will say I really love uh, poems by Taufik Ismail because I found his works are very uh, clear voice and make you think and always have a, a message. I honestly very happy to have my feet land on uh, Iowa City as the first state in uh, first first city in United States that I visit because uh, I found that people are very friendly and genuine and sincere and warm. It's like you cannot find bad people in Iowa. And another thing, I really feel that they are, feel so connected to the IWP program and they are very proud to be the host of that program. And that's happiness and the proud feelings, contagious. I mean, I was happy and proud to be here, but now I become more happy and, and, and proud. And also being here also give me different perspective about uh, the United States. I mean, I think the world knows that the United States is you know, ahead in technology, in industry, but uh, it surprised me that uh, America also very good in agriculture. Okay, because uh, Indonesia, we have 17, 480 islands, which is 4,000 among them hasn't been named yet. And we, cl we claim ourselves as a agricultural country, but in fact, we still have, de we depend on other countries for food supply. So that's another thing. I believe so. Uh, I met one person from Indonesia Publisher Association who told me that when people buy one book, they actually paid for 30 stages of taxes, like direct or indirectly, like ink taxes and paper and import and publishing and other things. And the more taxes, it means expensive book. And expensive books mean it's hard to sell and it's hard for people, especially if they don't have money to buy that book. So in my opinion, the government should decrease all the taxes and make it uh, the books more uh, reachable for people in the country. And also, uh, I do believe that the government should, should support uh, by selected good books for the library. And in Indonesia, we don't have the state writers. This is something else, uh, unlike other country, even Malaysia have uh, uh, state writers. And what I concern about also that I think the government should support the old senior writers. Because we, I know that there are many old senior writers that live in poverty and they don't deserve that. Especially those who has the work uh, recognized uh, internationally and make Indonesia give Indonesia a better name. In upcoming Iowa City Book Festival, I will be presenting about how religion, in my term Islam, uh, influenced my writing. And I should say that uh, the spirit that makes me write and have that those 49 books published comes from my beliefs. In Islam, we believe that um, all the good records that you do end when you die, unless three things. First is meaningful knowledge, knowledge that you teach to other people. And the second, 
good children that pray for you. So it will bring you good things after die. And the third is the continue good deeds, or we call it Amal Jariah. So being a writer, it gives me possibility to keep doing good things and inspire people, enlighten, encouraging in many ways, even after I die. So it's one reason. And As a writer, sure, we can write whenever we have uh, we found ideas and we can br write in as beautiful way as we wish. But if we can write a good ideas in beautiful ways, but at the same time, we can also inspire people or enlighten people, even though in a very small way, why not? And I do believe that writer or not, you sh we have to work on something that makes us happy. And, but we shouldn't live only for our personal goals or dreams. Because I believe that uh, happiness has more meaning when uh, you can also make other people happy. And I, I keep thinking that the world will be wonderful if everybody not just trying to get their happiness, their dreams done, but also at the same time try to contribute a little happiness in this world. Intellectual people especially, they respect those who can write. So I met an ambassador who said that he wished that uh, he will have a novel one day. And I met a teacher, a businessman, even a actor and singers, and they really wish they could 68 libraries for unprivileged children in Indonesia. I have a dream for 1,000, so it's still far to go. <laughs> In Indonesia, people really, uh, as a writer, people know me as Asma Nadia, but my real name is Asmarani Rosalba. I'm a writer from Indonesia, publisher and traveler addict, and uh, also a coordinator for be a writer. So it's a good thing. And in my country, I promote one motto. It's uh, one book before you die. I mean, uh, all of us will be die anyway, but if we can choose 